Hi there and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to break some prints to see how different materials react. So if that sounds interesting, keep watching. Creality sent me a K1 Max to play with and I needed a project to test it out. I wanted to revisit the video I made with the PLA shelf hangers. I'll leave a link up here if you want to go check that out. But, but now that I had a printer that was enclosed, I wanted to try printing a couple different materials to see how they would hold up. The K1 Max is a pretty nice machine. I did have a few issues at the beginning with uh, getting the bed to level properly and some extrusion issues, but both of those were fixed with some tweaks and uh, just adjusting the profiles. Sun Lu also wanted me to try out their S4 filament dryer and it was perfect for this project because there was a few filaments that don't like moisture. For each filament in the test, I placed it in the dryer for three hours before starting and then ran the print with the filament coming directly from the box. I like the S4 because it has multiple uses. One is a dryer for filaments that don't really like moisture, but also for other filaments, uh, the dryer can feed four different machines at the same time uh, while maintaining uh, constant humidity. This is how I've been using the dryer for the last few weeks feeding uh, four of my machines. So for this test, I didn't want to just make more shelf brackets, so I decided to make a single hanging bracket. The kind of bracket you would use to hang a potted plant. I needed to find a design that wasn't so strong that it would max out my scale like the shelf brackets did, but it also had to have a good range for all the different materials and hopefully they would fail dramatically. I started out with a simple design, but that proved to be too weak. And then I tried a few different supported designs, but they ended up being too strong. I then went through a few different variations, trying different things. Uh, at the same time, I was working out the extruding issues. This produced a lot of test prints. Videos like this take forever to make. So if you like watching these type of projects, it would really help me out if you could hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I finally ended up with this simple design. The top rail ends up being under tension and the bottom under compression. Because the bottom rail will want to buckle, I added a small rib to reinforce it. And then added two small supports to stabilize the two rails. This makes it strong, but not unbreakable. The top mounting point ended up being the main point of failure, but I couldn't find a good way of reinforcing this. You'll see what I mean when we get to the tests. But uh, comment below if you can think of a good way of making this point stronger. So here are all the filaments I used from Polymaker. We have PLA, ABS, PLA carbon fiber, ASA, nylon glass fiber, and polycarbonate. Also PETG, but it's not shown here. So now that the K1 was dialed in and the design was finalized, I could finally start uh, printing all the brackets. And here's all the brackets once the printing was complete. I printed three of each material. This way two brackets can be tested till their breaking point and I'll take the best result. And then the third one I'll use for a static load test. I'll hang a weight off the bracket for about 48 hours and then we'll test to see how much it sags over that time. This is something uh, people commented on the shelf bracket uh, test I did. So I'll figure we'll add it here and see what happens. Here's the braking test setup. I used bolts instead of screws to hold the brackets down because I found with my original testing, uh, the wood would get chewed up and then the screws would just get pulled out of the wood instead of uh, the bracket breaking. The hook that's pulling on the other end of the bracket has a small bungee cord attached. That way, uh, if it snaps free, I won't lose any teeth in the recoil. The device delivering the pulling force are two three pulley tackle blocks. These amplify the pulling force of the rope by five times. On the other end of the ropes is a force gauge that's measuring how much force is being applied in kilograms. The rope is attached to a makeshift winch. And then in case the bungee fails or there's any other shrapnel, I have a board set up between me and the bracket. Here's the first PLA test and you'll notice I have the bracket backwards. I got so used to attaching them this way, uh, testing the early designs I didn't notice. It's not a total loss though. It's a good example of what happens when forces are applied in the opposite direction of what something was designed for. Keep this in mind the next time you see a movie with a spaceship going underwater. Lord, 
that's over 150 atmospheres of pressure. How many atmospheres can the ship withstand? Well, it's a spaceship, so I'd say anywhere between zero and one. Even though it was backwards, just before it started folding in on itself, it was holding 57 kilograms. That's 126 pounds for anybody working in freedom units. Here's the second PLA bracket facing the proper way. The results are a little better. You can see the bracket flexing, but it stayed together until the top mounting point broke free. For the rest of the brackets, I'll just show some of the highlights, and then at the end, I'll have all the results. Here are the final results. Polycarbonate ended up holding the most weight, even though it started to fold on itself. PLA came in second with ASA close behind it. Nylon held a little bit less weight than that, and then ABS and PETG were next, holding about the same amount of weight. Carbon fiber was a little surprising that it held so little weight. I'm wondering if there was some issue with the prints, or it's just because of how rigid it is. All right, so let's look at the, the aftermath of all of the breakage. Here's the first one we did in the wrong direction. So you can see how it folded because all the strength was in the opposite way it needed to be. Uh, and all the supports broke and it basically just folded like an accordion. In comparison to the one working properly, it mostly stayed intact. It just failed right at the top here. Once this top piece broke and the uh, layers came off the bottom, then it just bent. There was nothing else holding it back. Now look at ABS. They both fail pretty much the same way. Uh, no real damage, a little bit of stress on this bottom strut. But same thing, the top piece failed. Once that failed, it just bent. Patchy was interesting. I didn't expect this to happen, for it to shatter. You can see where the top piece just completely separated and then also exploded the middle strut and then also broke the bottom. ASA was similar to ABS. You can see the top, once, once the top uh, layers let go, it was just left to the layer adhesion from the bottom, it just peeled off. There's a little bit of stress right at the top. The nylon fiberglass is very interesting. This is probably the most rigid out of all of the uh, materials. Really didn't flex at all. No uh, deformation anywhere. Just at the very top, the hook, I think it was when the pressure got too high, the top uh, sheared, and then it was just the layer adhesion holding it, and it separated. But if you look at the rest of the uh, of the bracket, there's no deformation anywhere else, no, f uh, no signs of uh, fatigue. PLA carbon fiber was surprising. It failed way quicker than I thought it would. Maybe there was print issues, maybe the layer adhesion wasn't uh, correct because it just snapped off of the top. Um, and really there's no other stresses anywhere else. If you do notice, it is very more, it's very brittle compared to the other parts. It's uh, shattered almost like a porcelain or a glass, as opposed to the rest of them that kind of pulled apart. And then the uh, polycarbonate, this one is very interesting. This is the only one that actually uh, buckled, but it also held the most weight. And then until Again, same like everything else, the end uh, delaminated and sheared off. What was it, what's going on in all these tests? You have all the pressure pulling down this one point, which means this top bar is under tension wanting to pull away, and this bottom bar is under compression trying to be pushed into the wall. So that's why it's always failing right up here, because you only have your top layers that are under um, tension, and then it's just a layer adhesion for the, uh, the back layers. So once this top breaks, it just peels off. For the static load test, I made a small stand that will hold four of the hangers at a time. The first group is PLA, ABS, PETG, and ASA. 
For each print, I'll hang a 25 pound weight off of it. That's about 11 kilograms. Now that it's been two days, let's take a look to see how much they flexed. Now with the weights removed, let's uh, take another look. All four have gone back to the original shape with no permanent uh, deformation. Next is PLA carbon fiber, nylon glass fiber, and polycarbonate. Now let's check these three to see if they've bent. Polycarbonate seems okay, but nylon seems to have a bit of a curve in it. Carbon fiber also, but very slightly. I better take a closer look. Uh, PC seems fine. Carbon fiber has a small bend, but you can barely tell. But nylon has a significant curve to the bottom rail. So now that the experiments are all done, what did I learn from all this? Well, for one, the Creality K1 Max is a pretty decent printer once you get it all dialed in. It didn't have any problems printing all the different material types. Another is the uh, Sunlu filament dryer is pretty handy to have. I mean, really its best use case is for materials that are very hydroscopic like the nylon, but you can see in the prints that they came out flawless. But even for normal materials like PLA, it comes in pretty handy just to act as a compact uh, storage roller that you can feed directly to your printers and it maintains a constant humidity. So PLA proved again that it's a pretty capable material. Probably wouldn't use it in places where it gets too warm. For something like that, you'd want to use ASA or ABS. The nylon hanger was incredibly rigid. It hardly flexed at all before it failed. It was kind of odd though that it kept the deformation after the static load test. I wasn't expecting that. Carbon fiber? I don't know what happened with that. I don't know if that was a printing issue or if it's just not as strong. I was expecting it to at least be as strong as the PLA. But it did fail in an interesting way. It was also very rigid and hardly flexed, and when it did break, it more shattered than pulled apart like the other materials. Well, that's all for now. I still have a lot of filament left over from all these different materials, so if you have uh, ideas of what else I can use it for, let me know in the comments. Uh, start your comment with the word plant, so I know you got this far. I'll leave you with the wise words of Adam Savage from Mythbusters. The only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down.